Good afternoon. For many of our staff, um, this is their favorite event of the year. Not because it's always perfect weather, um, but because there's a certain magic to this celebration of high achieving women, a real sense of community, of inspiration and support and strength. Uh, we had that, as I mentioned, alumni reception at Tower Hill several weeks ago, and uh, it's that a photograph from that event, which includes this year's uh, awardees and a lot of alumni. That's over 30 alumni who made it out to that event, um, and the sense of camaraderie there was really quite amazing. Um, so that's a neat element of this event. Another thing that we kind of love about it is our venue here, Tuckerman Hall. And so in the um, inside back of the program, on the very last page, there's a little history. And for those of you who've been here before for, for this event, you've heard me say this, but this was originally built as the Worcester Women's Club, uh, right around the late 1800s, around 1900. And um, it was built by a woman architect, Josephine Chapman. And I know I was talking to Katie Crockett earlier, and Katie's the uh, president of Lamarou Pagano Architects. And Katie, how many women architects were running their own firms in 1900, do we think? Yeah, maybe just one. So anyways, it makes it a great tie-in. And um, this kind of celebration can only happen in a hall like this and with this outstanding group when we have the support of the community and our partners and sponsors. So I want to give a special thanks to our presenting sponsors this year, which are Fallon Health and Nichols College, our supporting sponsors, which are March McLennan Agency, um, the Southbridge Credit Union, the Guru Tax and Financial Services, and the Women's Initiative of the United Way of Central Mass and their raffle. <laughs> and I'd like to, so anyways, let's give all of them a hand for helping to make this happen. And so uh, I'd like to invite our, both of our presenting sponsors one at a time to come up and share a few remarks. And first will be a member of our esteemed alumni group um, and Fallon, Senior, Fallon Health's Senior VP and Chief Human Resources Officer, Jill LeBeau. There she is, she's making it to the front. There's several, there's two lefts and a right to, to make it up to the stage. It's a little tight here, but that's what you get when it's a big turnout. So glad I didn't do that. Um, so good afternoon. Um, thank you, Peter, for mentioning that I've won the award before. It was quite an honor last year to be recognized. Fallon Health is proud to sponsor the Worcester Business Journal's recognition of the 2018 Outstanding Women in Business. Thank you, Peter, and the Worcester Business Journal team for showcasing the achievements that these talented women have made on the central Massachusetts business community. It's great to see so many people here supporting and celebrating our winners. I'm especially pleased to be here on the 10th anniversary of these awards. So many inspiring women have been recognized through the years, including two women that I have the honor of working with. Mary Ritter, Fallon Senior Vice President of Strategy, won the award in 2012, and Ann Tripp, a Fallon board member and Hanover employee, won it in 2014. We champion women at Fallon Health. Those of you who are local have probably read our statistics before, but our workforce at Fallon is comprised of 80% women, 73% women in leadership, and 50% women on the executive team. <laughs> women have been an essential part of Fallon's continued growth and success. We recognize the challenges that women face when they manage work-life balance. We're actually seeing these challenges increase as many women are becoming the caregivers for their aging family members. Many of you here today probably fit in that category, a caregiver for an aging family member. So as we celebrate National Caregivers Month this November, I thought I'd take the time to give you an overview of some of the work we're doing at Fallon to support caregivers. 
We offer unique programs designed to support frail elders and the family members that care for them. Our NAVCARE and Summit Elder Care programs provide comprehensive, coordinated, patient-centered care. It's designed to both relieve the stress of caregivers and engage them. We have a caregiver blog available on our website which tackles issues that caregivers face. And we're planning our third caregiver symposium that brings the relevant constituents together to talk about those challenges. Caregiving takes strength and commitment. I'm inspired when I look around the room and I see so many of you who give passionately to the many issues that affect women, including caregiving. On behalf of Fallon, I'd like to congratulate Kate, Carla, Lori, Jennifer, Marianne, and Sandra. Thank you for your leadership. The work you do has a positive impact on our community, and your dedication and your example are an inspiration. Thanks. You know, Jill, I'm glad you're from a health plan as I bang my head against the television. I, I looked out and I said, I'm seeing stars. But it's all, what, it, what it really was was all the great w women business leader in this, leaders in this audience. How about that? OK. Anyways, OK. Um, and next, I would like to uh, welcome up for some comments Dr. Susan, Susan West Enkelmeyer, who's the president of Nichols College, a longtime partner in this event, and a school that does a lot to develop and support women business leaders. Susan. I'm going to step this to this side now. Thanks, Peter. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Nichols College, congratulations to the six amazing women who are being honored today. We're very pleased to partner with Fallon Health as a presenting sponsor for this remarkable event. I also want to acknowledge Mr. Peter Stanton, not the most agile person on a stage necessarily, huh? but uh, for someone who has hosted such powerful events that recognize leaders in this community, and it's, it's amazing that this is the 10th one of these. Nichols believes in investing in leadership. Our mission is to transform today's students into tomorrow's leaders. And we have some of our remarkable students with us here today. Stand up a minute. We have undergrad and graduate students who were pleased to be with us today. <laughs> Thank you. For adult learners, Nichols offers bachelor's degrees and four graduate degrees now. And that includes the MBA, the Master of Science in Organizational Leadership, the Master of Science in Accounting, and most recently, we've launched a Master of Science in Counterterrorism. All of these programs require leadership and professional development within the program itself. And we're also pleased that our MBA program is now the 14th largest in Massachusetts, but we're also number eight in the proportion of women in the program. And we aspire to be more than that. I think we probably won't pass Simmons College. They're at like 89%. But we're going to move up the ladder on that one, too. In the last few years, we've put a particular focus on developing our women students through special programming. We have the Institute for Women's Leadership. And in that, we have options for our students to learn things like negotiation workshops. They have lean-in circles, trips to New York City to meet women business owners and entrepreneurs and executives, and the list goes on. The IWL is also part and hosts our spring conference, Empowering Women in Business. So if you uh, would like to know more about that, our IWL director, Rachel Ferrar, is here today, and she could uh, catch you up on anything you would like to know. This spring, we will release the third Women's Leadership Index. The inaugural index was published in 2015. And it was surprising to me when we learned that Massachusetts earned a failing grade on the proportion of women in leadership roles across a broad range of business, industry, government, uh, nonprofits, et cetera. So even two years later, in 2017, Massachusetts did improve 
but still only earned 39 out of 100 possible points for parity in executive positions. So when we launch the next index, we hope that we will see even more improvement, but we have so far to go. I'm reminded of Mia Hamm, who once said, celebrate what you've accomplished, but raise the bar a little higher each time you succeed. And this is a room that represents high bars, especially you, the 2018 Outstanding Women in Business. You exemplify that with your remarkable achievements, from starting a business in your garage to moving from a receptionist to a vice president. In your profiles, one of you talked about being told, girls can't win. But all of you kept raising those bars, and you kept winning. So congratulations on your amazing professional accomplishments, your commitment to the community and helping others, and the inspiration you draw from your friends and families and give back to others. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. So um, I hit my head against the stage. Not the first time I've embarrassed myself. We had a business leader event a few years ago. We were giving awards, and there was, the staging was about two and a half feet up, and I, and I walked off the back of it and fell off it. And I grabbed some pole that kept me standing, and thankfully the entire contraption didn't come falling down on, on, on everybody on stage. So mistakes aren't new, and sometimes things happen. So, Here's what happened this morning. It's early, there's eight or nine inches of snow. Luckily, it's not a breakfast event, right? It's a luncheon event, we're fine. But Chris Prosser, who runs our events, sends me a text that says, look at your, yes, Chris Prosser, let's give her a hand, woo! She sends me a text and says, look at your email, we have to talk. Well, what could happen? So I look, and at 4.47 this morning, Kathy LeMay, our terrific keynote, who was our keynote speaker on the very first year, wrote us and said, I was in the car for seven hours. This virus just completely just grabbed me. I am completely out on my heels, and, and I've never had to cancel a keynote, but I, I can't make it. And so this was sent at 4.47. So Chris thankfully waited till like 7 a.m. To, to allow me to sleep in and then think about this. So with her resourcefulness and with this group and our alumni, we, have a great, we came up with a great plan. I've had others volunteer uh, in the audience to speak. Thank you. Um, but we've asked two alumni to share some thoughts on uh, what it means to be a woman leader today. And we've asked an up-and-coming leader um, who's with Nichols to share her thoughts about that same issue. And so the first person I'm going to invite up to the stage is Victoria Waterman, who is the CEO of Girls, Inc. Victoria. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And I have a story to tell. And I have a timekeeper back there who's going to yank me off if it goes too long. But around the time that this wonderful event was starting up, about 10 years ago, at that time, I had introduced leading women to central Massachusetts in order to help advance women leaders in the community and in the business world. And with that, I wanted to get involved in the community as a volunteer, get involved in an organization that served women or girls. And so you know how that goes when you say that. It doesn't take too long for that to come back to you. So one of my first engagements was volunteering at the women's initiative Dollar Scholar. And along with myself, I had recommended several of my clients in financial services, one who's here today, Kerry, <laughs> uh, to come with me and, and volunteer to be a mentor. It didn't take long for Maureen Gray to introduce herself to me and make a phone call that changed my life and because she saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. 
She asked to meet and wanted to get better acquainted. Little did I know she was interviewing me for a board position at Girls Inc. of Worcester. I thought she just wanted to have lunch and get better acquainted. Next thing is I'm having a meeting with some board members at Girls Inc. and they invited me to join as the board president, which was very shocking. My jaw hit the table and I said, I'm not qualified for that. Girls, don't ever say that. That's the big mistake. Don't ever say that. But I really felt that I wasn't qualified for this. And the more they kept talking, the more they wouldn't take no for an answer. And I had to stop and think and say, what, what is it they see in me? When I think of a board president, I think of someone a little more senior in their career, someone with deep pockets, someone who works for a company with deep pockets, is engaged in the community, certainly is engaged with the organization, and I'm, I'm none of those things. So what is it in me that they see? So I turned it around and I said, hmm, if they're looking for someone with energy, someone with a fresh set of eyes and a new vision, if they're looking for someone who understands leadership and organizational development, if they're looking for someone who is a role model, has passion for the mission, and a very strong network of women leaders, then damn, I don't know anybody more qualified than me. So I completely took that, shifted that around, and I said yes. And I said yes with confidence and grace, and I couldn't wait to get started. I share this story because it is because of that phone call from Maureen Gray that I'm standing here today. It was a phone call for her. It changed my life. Uh, and I have tried to pay it forward in many ways. If you're ever at your desk and you're thinking, oh, I should call someone and tell them what a great job they did. Or I should call someone and give them encouragement for applying for that job. On behalf of me and Maureen Gray, please help us in paying this forward and doing the same. And thank you very much. And I kept it under five minutes. Thank you, Victoria. And um, next, I would like to invite up uh, Christine Thierry, who is with uh, Christine Thierry Corporation now. But those of you who recognize, who know her and recognize her name would know that she's been the CEO and president of the Idea Agency out of Sturbridge for many, many years. And I know she recently sold that business. So Christine, you're next. Thank you, Peter, and hello, everybody. I'm happy to be back up on the, I'm like Victoria, I have to lower the mic a little bit. Uh, I'm happy to be back here. Um, I was up here five years ago, I guess, um, being honored and uh, honored every day by, by that award. Um, as Peter mentioned, for 24 years, I ran Idea Agency, which was um, also Smith & Jones prior to that. And it's really, uh, it's just been six weeks since I closed the sale, and it's been amazing, um, an amazing journey. And I've been doing a lot of reflection, so it was really interesting that they asked me to speak today on short notice, so bear with me. <laughs> but I've been reflecting over sort of my career um, in marketing and was thinking uh, when I got out of school, I went to Syracuse. I'm a, I'm a Central New England girl, I grew up in Sturbridge, but uh, went to Syracuse and got my first job in New York City in advertising and worked on, back then we all worked on liquor and cigarettes, just like in Mad Men. <laughs> and uh, I worked on the brand of uh, Virginia Slims, You've Come a Long Way Baby, for those of you as old as me who remember that, that campaign. And at the time, women looked at each other, we were in business and we had come a long way, but we were, pulling out that sort of Melanie Griffith and working girl with the big shoulder pads and the 
t you know, the button-up shirts, and we were trying to look like men, right? We were competing with men and trying to look like men. And as I look back over, now it's 30 years career here, um, we have come a long way, and we, of course, still have a long way to go, but we should stop and celebrate really who we are and how we've become, and we don't show up to work and jobs and interviews uh, competing with men. We're now embracing who we are as women, what we bring to the table, and it's really refreshing for me to see how this has evolved. Um, I recall when we first started the agency, uh, Jean Jaguer Beaupre and I, and Jean's now at Nichols College, and um, I don't think she's here today, but we, we, we have a whole bunch of stories we could tell you. Uh, but back in the day, when the advertising industry and a lot of industry in general was dominated by men, um, some of our competitors would say, oh, here come the girls. Of course, I wish somebody would say that now, but, <laughs> but they would, you know, think that, you know, it was cute and a little demeaning to us, but we, you know, bucked up and we didn't care. We brought, we sort of embraced that youthful, energetic, thinking differently kind of approach, and that really worked for us for a long time. Um, we didn't care that we were the girls, and we really just, um, just tried to step up into who we were and be leaders that our employees could, uh, could follow and learn from. We often hired interns from the various colleges in the area, um, often young women who were looking to sort of follow in footsteps, and we really embraced, uh, embraced those employees. So, um, you know, as I look back, I'm thinking of different ways that we can help you, younger women into the workforce, whether it's through entrepreneurship or working at corporations. And um, I also want us just to think for a second about how we can help young men. I am the mother of three boys. They're all in college right now, so I'll take donations out the back when, <laughs> when you're all leaving. They, um, I think it's really important to teach young men how powerful women can be, and it's just as important um, to show them that everybody is kind of an equal, stands a chance. You know, you might come up against uh, a, a woman or a man or anybody at a job situation that um, is, is your equal and is a competitor. And um, two of my sons are attending business school, one at UMass Eisenberg and another at Georgia Tech um, Scheller School of Business. I'm very proud of that. And uh, my, my son at Georgia Tech has been interviewing for different internships. And one of the questions somebody asked him was, who is your biggest influence in business? And he said, my mom. And I'm going to get a tear in my eye here. But, um, but isn't that incredible that, you know, here's a kid in a really powerful business school who, who claims that his mom was the one who sort of got him into the idea of business and what you can do if you own your own business. Um, and he would tell you, I, I actually, as I was cleaning out my office, I found a little box of office supplies. And it says, Oscar's supply box on it. And that was my son. And from an early age, four or five years old, he would walk around the office and sell people staples, <laughs> tape, all kinds of stuff, a little white out. So you always had to buy something from him. We had this one web developer who did not have an outgoing personality. And at one point, he, Oscar came up to him with the box and he said, you want to buy something from me? And the guy was like, no, I'm OK. And Gene was like, oh my god. Who doesn't buy from a four-year-old? <laughs> so he didn't last too long, that guy. <laughs> so anyways, in closing, I say let's embrace the young men and women of today and tell them how it is so great that we live in a time where you can embrace who you are as a leader, as a business person, and we can all respect each other just for our individuality. So thank you so much. Now, you could argue these seasoned veteran award winners could come up here and give a speech without much notice. But uh, our next speaker, Takia Blake, uh, who's with Nickel College, we called on her. And she had, did we give you about an hour or two? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Not a lot. So we're looking for spontaneity. Takia is, is with Nickel. She is, um, they, Nickel's recently opened an office of diversity and inclusion. 
and uh, Takiya is the Associate Director. Let's hear from Takiya Blake. Hello. <laughs> this is nuts. Um, my name is Takiya Blake. I'm the Associate Director for the Office of Diversity and Inclusion at Nichols College. Um, I'm also from Worcester, born and raised. Whoop, whoop. Um, I no longer live in Worcester, though. I do live in Providence, Rhode Island now, but it's always nice when I get to come back. Um, so I'm actually a Nichols College alum. I graduated in the class of 2015. Um, and right after graduation, I started my career in the admissions office as an admissions counselor. Um, so my territory consisted of Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, you see where I'm going with this. Um, but then I also had some chunks of Massachusetts, which were Springfield, Worcester, and Boston. So kind of polar opposites. Um, I was in urban cities, but then I was also in predominantly white states. Um, so a lot of times in you know, Worcester, or Boston, or Springfield, students would ask about diversity on campus and what support services we held for those students. And I didn't have an answer for them. Um, so that's how the Office of Diversity and Inclusion was created. Um, Nichols has always, always, always been a place that has fostered creativity, innovation, and opportunity, not only for our students, but also for our faculty and staff. Um, case in point, I was asked to speak to you all an hour ago. Um, President Susan Engelmeyer was like, hey, do you want to talk? And I'm like, oh. Um, so here we are. Um, I saw the opportunity for underrepresented students on our campus and um, with the help of Rachel Ferreira, the director for the Institute of Women's Leadership, also my mentor and one of my very best friends, we created the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. Um, we lovingly refer to it as ODI. So ODI is a place that lends a space and support um, to students that identify as diverse, whatever that may mean. So race, gender, um, sexuality, religion, whatever it is, um, we want a place where their voices can be heard and their um, concerns to be validated. So I have been fortunate enough to work for an institution that has a plethora of women leaders. Um, our president, Susan Inglemeyer, is a woman. Um, Rachel, like I mentioned, our dean of students is a woman. Um, and they've all used their positions, um, their leadership positions, excuse me, um, and their platforms to make a difference in our community as a whole. Um, and I really want to thank them for believing in me for such an important initiative on our campus, the first ever of its kind. Um, my goal in this role and with this office is to make Nichols a more inclusive campus, community, and culture through advocacy, awareness, and education. Um, and I hope to empower Nichols students the way that Nichols has empowered me not only as a student, not only as that admissions counselor, 21 years old, just starting out, um, not only as a black woman that's heading our diversity and inclusion efforts, um, but as a leader as a whole. Thank you so much. Wow, she killed it. <laughs> Beautiful. So Takia and Victoria and Chris, thank you so much. That was, that was sweet, very sweet. Um, the, we're going to get into the awards presentation uh, part now. And um, so I'm going to invite up uh, Brad Kane uh, for a few comments. Um, and Brad will get the show running. Brad is the editor of the Worcester Business Journal and overseas uh, the whole, the whole nine yards. Just one, one more thing related to you winners. If you wanna like rap or 
like be talking back and uh, walking up and down and talking to the audience like this. We, we have an alternative microphone here if you don't feel like sitting, st standing behind this staging. So we're going to give you choice A and B. And if, this, if, you, if you want this mic, you got the run of the stage. Okay? Thanks. Thank you, Peter. Um, I did not write a rap for this. Uh, so as Peter mentioned at the start of the show, this is the 10th year Worcester Business Journal has been honoring leaders in the central Massachusetts economy with the Outstanding Women in Business Awards. We do this every year by having our panel of judges evaluate a slate of nominees based on their professional achievements, role in the community, and mentorship of area professionals. This year we had another record-setting year for nominations with 51 women under consideration to join the prestigious alumni of this award. In this moment, we'd like to thank our judges for taking the time to carefully vet these nominees and select our 2018 Outstanding Women in Business. <laughs> the judges this year were Melanie Bonsu, Director of Development and Marketing Communications for the Girl Scouts of Central and Western Massachusetts, Bert LaValle, President and Co-Founder of Sustainable Comfort, Inc., and partner at the restaurants Dead Horse Hill and Simjang, and uh, I don't know if I need to say your title a third time, Jill, but Jill LeBeau, uh, Senior Vice President and Chief Human Resources Officer for Fallon, uh, who has now been recognized three times in one hour, I think. <laughs> but uh, yes, she won the award last year as well. But now on to uh, this year's nominees. This year's winners, I apologize. Sandra Brock. Since joining the women-owned niche engineering firm in 1995, Sandra Brock has proven herself a strong leader. She rose through the ranks and took the lead on many facets of the firm's strategic planning. Sandra then became the driving force behind niche engineering opening a Worcester office in March of 2015. Sandy is a leader at niche engineering and in her industry with a history of mentoring staff and educating students in addition to her volunteer time with a number of nonprofit industry organizations. Sandy's early career volunteer work had her join the Peace Corps for two, two years in Malawi, Africa, where she managed several water projects. Today, she is chair of the Conservation Commission in Grafton and also serves on the town's preservation committee, community preservation committee and on the board of directors for the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissions. That's, is that it? Is it? There's like 12 more things, right? She's always motivated to learn new things and brings that special make the world a better place attitude to everything she gets involved in. But let's hear what a few others have to say about Sandy. I met Sandy Brock 23 years ago when she came in for an interview. She had just returned from her Peace Corps service from Malawi and she just blew me away. And it was really um, amazing, and I walked out of that interview and said, we have to hire this woman. And here we are 23 years later, and she's my business partner, and I'm thrilled to have her as part of our niche team. I think Sandy is an outstanding member of the business community because she is, she is very broad in her thinking. And when she is asked to, she brings her expertise as an engineer to the table, but she also brings a broader perspective. My community work, I actually am on the Conservation Commission in Grafton. And what I really enjoy is helping people who have never gone through the regulatory process to help them, to show them that it's not scary, that it's something that's important, and that they're part of the process. I would say that Sandy's greatest strength is her ability to teach, be able to keep things simple, both internally as a chief engineer with our staff and externally at public presentations working with the public. Fantastic. One of the things I admire most about Sandy is that she's still so focused on the technical aspects of our work, where a lot of times as you move up the chain in management, you more, have more responsibilities with people, but she hasn't lost touch with the people or with the technology side, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. One piece of advice I like to give to young engineers, and specifically women, is to find your voice, and whatever that voice may be, but when you're in a male-dominated field, sometimes you feel like you should be sitting in the corner. You need to show confidence. You need to show that you really do know what you are and that you really are a professional. So find your voice. That is the biggest advice I would give someone. If Sandy were to be cast in a movie, she would have to be 
a leader in the uh, movie itself, and it would have to involve science, and something where it was a woman doing something very unusual. So I picture her as the lead actress in a movie about Jane Goodall or Marie Curie, um, something of that sort. She'd be fabulous for it. Sandra, congratulations. I hope you are enjoying yourself in this beautiful Tuckerman Hall, and I wish you all the best. Sandy, congratulations. I can't think of a better person to win this award, and I wish you all the best. For her leadership, love of learning, and community involvement, please help me in honoring Sandra Brock. I get to be first. So, I'm honored to be part of this exceptional group of businesswomen. In fact, I told them I'll set the bar really low with my thank you speech so that you guys can come up and shine. I would like to thank the Wor Worcester Business Journal for, um, you know, uh, for recognizing and promoting um, business women here in Worcester. I'm not always comfortable talking about myself, but I've had the pleasure of working at Niche Engineering for the last 23 years. You saw a couple of the folks on the screen there, that Lisa Brothers. Um, and so when I had found out about this award, I actually uh, sent an email out to my company and asked them, you know, I'm not comfortable doing this, can you kind of help me with my speech? I got a lot of very nice responses, and I got one in particular suggestion. So I'm just going to read you that, su uh, that suggestion. Congratulations. I find that original interpretive dance <laughs> can be a useful when I have trouble expressing something in words. And then he went on to say, please feel free to use my suggestion. If you need help with choreography or music selection, please feel free to reach out to me. The folks at the table from Niche know it's probably Dave Conway, and you're right. Um, even though I appreciated that suggestion, there's not enough alcohol in this state <laughs> that, I would, uh, that I could get the courage to do that. One thing about this award that uh, has given me the opportunity to pause and, and look back at my journey and how I got here and to understand just how lucky I am to have been at Niche Engineering for 23 years. They have taught me how to be a professional engineer. I've grown there. I've gone through a process of becoming a shareholder. And in this year, I will be the second largest shareholder uh, after this year, which is pretty incredible. I'm now on the board of directors, and I'm also on the executive committee. So I've grown a lot. So I never thought I would be here. I mean, I, the role that I have now is amazing. And that just tells me that all of us, we all can do things that we don't think we can. And I'd like to thank the folks from Niche Engineering that are here, my fellow shareholders, uh, Lisa, Gary, Chelsea, Maud, and Jarrett. Um, I also want to specifically thank Lisa because she always wanted me to be outside of my comfort zone. She has spent 23 years of doing that, and I have to thank her for that. And both Gary and Lisa I've worked with for over 20 years. Um, I trust them, and that's such an important thing. I mean, I respect them, and I know they always have my back, and you make going to work a pleasure. So now that I've looked past and I look at where I am now, I think about the future. And the future is bright, and I think anything is possible. In fact, I'm actually thinking about taking lessons in interpretive dance. <laughs> so get out of your comfort zone, and thank you, and think big. All right. So. Could, we, could someone get Sandra a scotch? And we're, we're going to play the dance music. She'll, she's got plenty of time to make a dent in that bottle. Um, 
We have different guest presenters, and I would like to introduce uh, Liz Marie Colazzo, who is the Director of Marketing and Community Outreach at the Southbridge Credit Union. Liz Marie. I'm wicked short. I don't know if you guys can even see me over this thing. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe I'll do that in interpretive dance. Who knows? Good afternoon, everyone. As a recent college grad, Marianne Lancaster started her packaging business from her kitchen table in 1989. Fast forward almost 30 years, and Marianne has grown the business from one product line into a $16 million national wholesale distribution and purchasing company, providing vendor and supply chain management services in over 11 states. As a minority woman, she hasn't had an easy time building her company in a typically male-dominated industry, but she's had the grit to keep moving ahead. Today, Lancaster Packaging works with many of the largest aerospace and defense companies, including Lockheed Martin Sikorsky Helicopter Division and General Dynamics Electric Boat, which makes submarines on the Connecticut shore. The company has ranked among the top 50 of the Boston Globe's list of 100 female-led businesses in the state. Not only has Marianne persevered to overcome the many challenges put in front of her, but she has continued to be able to grow her business while also helping to mentor other women and minorities along the way, a resource she did not have in her early years of the business. In addition, to mentoring others, she serves on the advisory board of the Central Massachusetts Center for Women and Enterprise. Now let's hear a little bit about what others have to say about Mary Ann. I met Mary Ann Lancaster about 30 years ago, 28 years ago, and she was very focused, very on detail, and I said to myself, this young lady really has something going on. I was immediately impressed with Marianne. She stood out very quickly from a lot of the other entrepreneurs that I met. I think success for me, or how I got so much success so far for the company and myself is that I'm able to take a look at a situation, whether it's a customer or an individual, and figure out what is the pain point. How can I help? What value am I going to add? I can take a step back and not say, I'm pushing, pushing, pushing my product, my service. I'm so happy that Marianne won the award for Outstanding Woman in Business this year because she really is an outstanding member of the business community. She not only employs people and, and grows her business and really gives her own employees the ability to grow within their um, positions, but she also gives of herself to the community and uh, other women and veterans in business. Um, and she just gives of herself in very many different ways. How Mary Ann thrives within the business community and helps the business community is the fact that she always goes out of her way to attend certain functions that other people at her level just don't have the time. She makes time. I really like to get involved with women that are starting up their own businesses. How can they have advice that's going to help them get started. Sometimes it's such a struggle just to figure out which direction, what organization to do. When I started my business there was no one out there to help me, no one to even guide me. There's so many organizations out there and just to have the support uh, and not feel alone I think is so important to women starting their own business. The one lesson that I've learned from Marianne is the power of networking and connections. She really is a people person and she gets it. She understands that relationships really do matter and in the business world they matter very much and she's been a mentor to me in how to do that well. Marianne, congratulations on receiving such a prestigious award. Uh, I've always been very proud of everything that you've accomplished in your entrepreneurial career and I think this one is one of the highlights of everything that you've received. I'm wishing you all the best in the future, and I, I know you'll have a very bright future with Lancaster Packaging. Please join
join me in honoring this persistent and determined self-made woman, Mary Ann Lancaster. I'm gonna wrap. <laughs> so, um, many of us are uh, challenged and we just wanna say, you know, for the next year, we are gonna make sure there's a little stool here, you know, this is a women's event and, you know, we don't want any discrimination. Actually, I'm not that short. Good morning. Congratulations to my fellow honorees and winners. I really have to thank Leora, I'm not sure where she is, Leora Stone from Precision Engineering for nominating me because I'm very honored to have this and I thank you know, the WBJ you know, for this honoree. Um, and <clears throat> I'm actually very proud that I'm in the 10 year because we got to have our event of photographs in, for the um, newspaper with all 10 years of honorees, and it's just amazing. I, I really feel proud to be in this group, I'm, you know, um, and among all of you. It's kind of funny because I talk about male-dominated, someone else mentioned this, and so many women start off saying, when they tell their story, you know, I'm in a male-dominated industry, right? and then they go from there. Well, I was thinking about that and I felt like we're in a male dominated world. <laughs> you know, it's not industry, it's not, you know, just where you are. We all deal with situations that entrepreneurs dealt with or topic women um, in executive world. So um, I have to comment that I was feeling met alone throughout the years of what, what I accomplished and it was male dominated, but in the last 10 years, the organizations, corporations, educational institutions like Nichols, you know, Bentley University has the Women for um, Business Enterprise. There's so many things out there that I steer folks to, and it's just amazing. And I think, you know, sometimes when you talk about glass ceiling and, and you're not, you're the only one in an organization, the people might think, and this used to be a stigma, oh, women don't support each other. Well, I have felt in 30 years that they do. And I think what I've seen, you know, is there's more trailblazers, there's more women supporting each other. But one of the biggest changes I've seen in the past three years is the public awareness to the world, when I say the world, the male-dominated world, that we are supporting each other. And I think organizations like WBJ that bring that awareness is what's really been a catalyst in the last three to five years to help us to continually develop and grow as individuals in whatever organization we are. So um, awards like this, anything out there that gets the public in general to know our success is amazing. So thank you, WBJ. Terrific, thank you, Marianne. And um, our next presenter, where are you, Leah? Um, Leah Lampson, who is, the who is the chair of the Leadership Council of the Women's Initiative of the United Way and is one of our long-term partners at this event. And Leah's the next presenter. Thank you, Peter. Jen Louisa. Jen Louisa started her career at the Hanover Insurance Group as a receptionist but it didn't take long before the company recognized her potential and fed her increased responsibilities and the opportunity to become a leader in the company. Today, she is Vice President of Marketing and Communications, overseeing close to 1,000 projects a year. Among her many accomplishments at Hanover has been her leadership in managing the company's rebranding, as well as her continued role as President of the Hanover Foundation. Jen's passion is helping others, whether it be through mentoring, her way of paying it forward for all those who have mentored her, or through her many volunteer positions. She's been an active board member for the United Way and the Women's Initiative, and in case you haven't heard, there's a really swell raffle going on for the Women's Initiative. Um, also, the Dr. Franklin Perkins School, the Boys and Girls Club of Worcester, Worcester Education Development Foundation, and the Worcester Regional Research Bureau, as well as her local PTO. 
Every day, Jen works to live up to her father's favorite motto, to whom much is given, much is expected. Let's listen to what others have to say about Jen in this short video. So Jen and I have worked together for a number of years in uh, two or three uh, turns at the bat. Um, I first met her probably 10, 12 years ago uh, when she and I were working in the marketing department here at the Hanover. My first impression of Jen, she was that she exudes incredible warmth and positive energy. Anyone who meets Jen, she greets you with a smile and you can't help but be engaged immediately. What makes Jen amazing um, it truly is her loyalty to her people. It's hard to find a leader that cares as much about those who work with her, um, for her, alongside her. She genuinely cares. What I loved about her, she really wanted to listen and learn more about the kids we were serving in that uh, clubhouse and how they could help. And within a few weeks, I heard back from her and uh, Hanover Insurance not only was going to support us, they were actually going to sponsor that clubhouse. So I have to tell you, uh, eight years ago, um, we transformed the Boys and Girls Club in Great Brook Valley thanks to her and Hanover. My community passion is centered around work to help children. Um, once I had my kids, everyone became my kids and I want to make sure that I can do whatever I can to make the lives of children healthier, stronger, and more vibrant. Jen is a perfect role model for young men and women and they can look to emulate her in many ways and one of the most important ways is her positive attitude. She brings it to the table and everyone therefore wants to work with her and engage with her. As a mentor to many young women, I enjoy sharing my career history but also listening to their stories and the new challenges that they face in the workforce. By serving as a mentor, we can help ensure that they learn from the past and are prepared for the future. The one thing that I've always wanted to tell Jen, um, I'm not sure I have, but she truly has been one of the most influential people in my life, um, not just professionally, and she's done so much for me to help bring me up um, and come into my own, but personally as well. Um, she's just an incredible friend, and I feel very fortunate to have her um, in my life. Congratulations, Jen, on winning the Worcester Business Journal Outstanding Women in Business Award. It's very well deserved, and I'm really excited for you. I wish you the very best, and I know you're going to continue to do amazing things. Thanks for everything you've done for us. You're a real blessing. Please help me in celebrating a talented woman with a pay-it-forward attitude, Jen Louisa. Laura Devaney, come on, you're making me ball my eyes out before I even get started. <laughs> so I'd like to give a heartfelt thank you to the team at the Worcester Business Journal. <clears throat> you guys have done a beautiful job. I'd like to thank the selection team, and I'd like to thank the wonderful rock star alumni who paved the way for all of us. Um, after Brad Hall had sent me uh, an email outlining the award in detail, the first person I shared it with was my husband. And it was shortly before dinner time, and my husband took an opportunity to say to my kids, hey, I'm going to read you a note about your mother, and I want you to pay attention. Well, my daughter Stella was on Instagram, <laughs> and my son George was watching YouTube videos of people playing Fortnite. <laughs> But my husband plugged on and started to read, and he, my husband got frustrated. He said, hey, do you know what I'm telling you? Do you know what I'm telling you about your mother? To which my daughter, Stella, rolled her eyes and looked at him and said, Dad, we know. Mom won the most outrageous woman <laughs> in business. <laughs> How right she is. <laughs> So I'd like to begin by congratulating my fellow outrageous women, Sandra, Marianne, Lori, Carla, and Kate. Your stories are amazing, and I'm honored and humbled to be in your company. 
And this experience has caused me to reflect on the fact that all women have pretty great stories and ones that need to be told. And when I read each of our stories, I, there was a common theme that threaded through all of them that was authenticity, bravery, and a healthy dose of grit. So uh, for me, I've never felt my work has been alone. Any contributions that I make in my career has always done, been done with a team of terrific people, many men and many amazing women. I'd like to thank my boss, Dick Levy, and all my colleagues, um, and particularly my marketing team, community relations, and HR friends. Um, at the Hanover, which I have grown up at with for 20 years, we pride ourselves on showing up and being there. And whether it's in our business, responding to a claim, or whether it's in the community, the world is run by those that show up. So if I have any advice to young women, it's show up, because it makes all the difference in the world. I'd also like to thank my partners in the community, uh, Michael Ames from the Perkins School, Liz Hamilton from Boys and Girls Club, and my good friend Tim Garvin from United Way. One of the greatest things about in my career has been the special gift of realizing that your role in business can be used for good in the community, and that's just the icing on the cake. Um, and then I'd like to thank my home team, my sister Kara, my brother-in-law Scott, my brother Jay, and my Aunt Susie. You're the first team I ever had, and our relationship is one of my greatest treasures. I'd like to thank my husband Chris, my daughter Stella and George. Chris, you're the only person who could possibly put up with me, <laughs> and I thank God every day you do. Um, and my kids who've, who've taught me that the most important thing we can do is take care of children because everybody is somebody's baby. So, so thank you again. So as we celebrate the 10 year of the special award, I'm excited as well for the future of women and it keeps getting better. So here's to outstanding, outspoken, and outrageous women. <laughs> Cheers. Oh, and Paul Belsito, Paul Belsito, Paul Belsito. <laughs> All right, so our next presenter is Cheryl Hooper, the Managing Director of Property and Casualty and Operations at Marsha McLennan Agency. Cheryl. Good afternoon. Massey Bioservices, also known as Massey Systems, was started in 1984 in Lori and John Massiello's garage. The firm, which specializes in biostorage, quickly outgrew that rather modest garage and today has a 120,000 square foot facility in Pepperell. It, has doubled in it was doubled in October when the company finished a 60,000 square foot addition. Lori and her husband, John, have figured out just the right division of the duties. Lori is president and ex executor of their plans, while John plays the role of entrepreneur. So in the early days, Lori was the one who created the company's database, corresponded with customers, and handled all of the shipping and receiving. Today, with 130 employees and growing, Lori no longer gets the UPS boxes ready, but built a highly successful operation that has several major pharmaceutical companies as clients. An outgoing and personable leader, but also a shrewd negotiator, Lori has created a family-like atmosphere within the company, helping integrate brothers, sons, and daughters-in-law into the business while treating everyone as part of the extended family. Here is what a few others have to say about Lori. I first met Lori Massiello in 2010 when I began working at North Middlesex Savings Bank. Um, interestingly enough, Lori and I were both Pepper residents and had been for quite some time. Lori is an outstanding member of our uh, local business community. Um, I can't think of anyone else who gives as much of her time, talent, and treasure as Lori. She's everywhere, all the time. We started a small family business in our home, so that worked for us. Our boys were part of our every single day. They would answer the telephone, they would empty the trash, they would put paper in the copier, so we were, had flexibility to build our schedule around our boys' schedule. 
but our boys were part of the sacrifice and they were part of the rewards. Laurie has an amazing record in the business community in Pepperell, Mass. for over 35 years. She has championed every single organization and every cause for many years. She sat on the board for the Pepple Business Association, for the Neshoba Valley Chamber of Commerce. She is the number one fundraiser for the July 4th parade, and she is an ardent supporter of Patch, the local food bank. I think Lori's greatest strength is her ability to connect people and to connect to people. She has the, this great way of making people feel comfortable whenever she meets them. Lori is an amazing person, and um, uh, I've had the opportunity to work with her for a number of years, and she just has a, an innate ability to uh, address detail, uh, and she's perhaps one of the most ethical persons I've ever met. Our business is about pharmaceutical companies, medical device, and biotech. In our industry, precision and accuracy and quality are key. We have recognized customer needs and we have given them innovative solutions. I really have been impressed with how firmly committed to Pepperell and growing jobs in the town where the, uh, Lori and John live. And I think that's special. Being part of a community is something that I certainly appreciate. I know a lot of my employees and customers appreciate. And I know for sure that Lori appreciates it. Congratulations, Lori, on being chosen for the Outstanding Women's Business Award. Congratulations, Lori. I'm so grateful that I've had the opportunity to work with you. Thank you for being on the leadership team at the Chamber. I wish you more continued success. For her amazing management skills, vision, and leadership, please help me in congratulating Lori Massiello. Nobody told me about that video. So there's a lot of people over here that have some explaining to do. <laughs> so, good afternoon. The Worcester Business Journal has developed a fabulous forum recognizing accomplished women. Kudos to your idea, kudos to the judges, and kudos to the outstanding women you have recognized these past 10 years. The class of 2018 is diverse. We have different backgrounds, we are from different industries, and we took different paths to success. Our commonalities bring us together today. We are women of action, we are adventuresome risk takers, we are thoughtful, caring, smart, passionate, generous, and forward-thinking women. Congratulations to the class of 2018 Thank you to all that are assembled here who have supported us throughout our lives. And thanks to my family and some of those other people that have the explaining to do. So, to my mom, to my brothers, my sons, my daughter-in-laws, my aunts and my uncle John, my godchild, my coworkers, my friends, our driving school teacher from high school, where my husband and I first met. <laughs> to our lawyer and our banking partners who have helped us develop our business and became our friends, who have explaining to do. <laughs> Thank you to my husband, John, the other half of my brain. You are my business and my life partner. Together we make it happen. Since we were 16, you have encouraged me, you have challenged me, and you dare me to do more. You bring out the best in me, you share my office, and you share my life. And today, you share in this recognition. And to all the young women here today, and particularly my crew, Melissa, Marielle, Karen, Carlin, and Taeba, continue to be the best you. Stretch where you want to go and ask for help when you need it. You are outstanding women. Thank you for all, the, for all of you for celebrating with us today. Thank you.
There she is. She's been through this routine. Our next presenter is ready. It's uh, Dr. Susan West Enkelmeyer, president of Nichols College. Susan. Carla McCall is a co-managing partner of AAF CPAs, the ninth largest CPA firm in New England. An avid supporter of female leadership, Carla is known for her advocacy in aggressively recruiting and retaining a number of female CPAs in what has traditionally been a male-dominated field. She has helped to grow the company by some 50% while also increasing female leadership in the firm from 25 to 47 percent. In addition, earlier this year, she helped launch AAF CPA's new innovation lab. Try to say that seven times fast, AAF CPA's. To, <laughs> the innovation lab helps cultivate innovative and entrepreneurial mindsets among AAF CPA's young professionals. Still not satiated with the many accomplishments at her day job, Carla also founded the Women's Opportunity Network to help women discuss and conquer the many challenges they face in the workplace. Known for her big heart, Carla believes in mentoring others in her field and encouraging professional women to ask for what they want. Her many volunteer positions have included being on the board of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. She gives Boston, MSCPA, and the Jordan Matthew Porco Memorial Foundation of Hartford. Let's hear some more of what others have to say about Carla. I met Carla McCall 20 years ago when she came to work at AAF CPAs. Uh, her and I have been working very closely together for the past 20 years. Today we are co-managing partners and I am proud to, to be her co-managing partner. My first impression of Carla, if I can recall, was at a cocktail party through our Bentley Executive Club. Right away I could tell she was fun. She's got this sparkly look to her and her eyes are really pretty and bright. And I think most people are naturally attracted to her. They want to get to know her and talk to her. The first time I knew Carla was marked for greatness was when she thought she was ready to be partner and the other partner group did not think that she was. She had to take another year and at that time she became a much stronger leader and she was truly ready to be partner and obviously to be co-managing partner of AEF CPAs. Hands down, the one thing that's led to my success is grit. Uh, to make it to any leadership position, uh, you need to understand that it takes hard work and that you're gonna fail along the way. But it's okay to fail. You need to pick yourself up, brush yourself off, and move forward and always have your future goal in mind. So obviously being Carla's been for the last 23 years, um, I, I admire her as a businesswoman, but also um, as a mom and a wife. She spends a lot of time with her family. She travels a lot with her family, and you know she can always be counted on to, to be there for her family. So work-life balance is a, a funny concept because you're never really in balance. But what I tell young women is that you want to make sure that you're planning ahead. Everybody's balance and how they're integrating all the different parts of their life are different. And it very much becomes a family uh, decision. So create the path that works for you and your family and then uh, ask for it and talk about it. Talk about what you need. Don't be afraid to get creative and uh, set some goals. For all the drive and passion that she shows at work, her home life is very loving. She's a great wife and a great mother, uh, somebody that I love to be with every single day. Congratulations, Carla, on winning this Outstanding Women in Business Award. I'm so proud of you, and I can't wait to see where you end up in the next 10 to 20 years. It's going to be so exciting to watch you grow and thrive in your career. Carla, congratulations on earning this award. Thank you for everything you do for me and our family. I wish you the best of luck and continued success. I love you. For her passion and devotion towards her career, her staff, 
and her community, please give a big hand for Carla McCall. Peter, I was going to fake trip up those stairs just to make you feel better, but... <clears throat> <laughs> it's truly an honor to be here today among these amazing honorees and all the women who have come before us. I do want to thank the Worcester Business Journal for having this event to recognize women leaders. Um, aside from Fallon, we have much work to do <laughs> on improving the number of women in leadership positions. Uh, it is proven, there are written case studies, that companies with more women in leadership positions are more successful. AAFCPAs is just one small example. So today I challenge companies to do better. Don't wait for women to ask for a leadership role, help them. Encourage women to set lofty goals, to ask for what they want, and to be authentic along the way. Make sure they have a clear path of how to get there and make sure your company has a strategy and company-wide goals for diversity in leadership. I work hard every day in the hopes that my 15-year-old daughter, Alexandra, who is here today, will not be afraid to set ambitious goals, to ask for what she wants, not be afraid to boast about her accomplishments, and most importantly, not have to worry about being treated equally in the workplace. As leaders, we all have a responsibility to make sure the path is clear for those of us coming up behind us. I would like to thank my dear, dear friend, Sue Gorman, who nominated me for this. She's one of my biggest fans. She taught me years ago the importance of helping other women, the importance of networking, the power of making strategic introductions for others. She taught me to be confident in my own abilities and take credit for my accomplishments. And that is a hard one, that last one, to take credit for your accomplishments. But boy, I take credit all the time now, and I'm not shy. So my mom is also here today, and I would like to thank my mom. My mom emigrated from Italy with her family as a teenager, and through her own personal journey, taught me the meaning of a strong woman from a very early age. So thank you, Mom. My family, my husband Chris, my daughter Alexandra, my son Evan, who put up with my crazy schedule and travel, but also see firsthand, they get to witness someone who absolutely loves what they do on a daily basis and love their company. It's true passion, and I hope they too someday uh, will find their true passion. Well, I think my husband's found it, but I mean my kids, anyways. <laughs> Lastly, all of my partners, many are here uh, today um, from AAFCPAs who have always supported me along this journey. Uh, who let me lead and be my true, authentic self and truly, truly supported me along the way. And growing up for the last um, time in this industry, it was all men that were supporting me. And um, really, I truly am grateful to them. I'm going to leave you with uh, one of my favorite quotes, and it really reson resonates with me because I do lead authentically, and it's from Sheryl Sandberg. True leadership stems from individuality that is honestly and sometimes imperfectly expressed. Leaders should strive for authenticity over perfection. Thank you. Okay, our next presenter. I'm not going to say her last name. I'm not going to say her company and I'm not gonna say her title. We just know her as Jill. Here you go, Jill. Jill LeBeau. So I'm honored to be here to present the award to Kate Sherry. As the owner of Group Benefit Strategies, Kate Sherry works with cities and towns to find the right insurance for municipal employees. Well known by friends and colleagues for her sense of humor, Kate has the special skill of being able to make all the women she interacts with feel genuinely welcome 
and included no matter what the occasion. Kay began her work at the company working directly with her dad. She took on increasing responsibility over the years and was able to purchase the family business in 2012. As a business owner, she has learned the valuable balance of taking advice from others while embracing her own personal style. She has been an active board member for several organizations, including serving in the highly visible role of board chair of the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce. Additional volunteer work includes serving on the board of the Worcester Business Development Corporation, Worcester Homeless Youth Task Force, and Planting the Seed Foundation. Kate's goal is to continue to uplift women and support them in business. Here's what others have to say about Kate. I met Kate Sherry a number of years ago when she came on to the chamber board and I was chairing the board at the time. She took the job very seriously. She became a member of the executive committee. She was a ton of fun to work with and it was a great kickoff to what I know will be a lifelong relationship. I was probably a little bit intimidated by her because you know here she was a successful business owner in Worcester, but after I had the opportunity to get to know her a little bit, I realized that she is really kind and caring and professional and just one of the strongest women I've ever had the opportunity to, to work with. The impression that I like to leave with people who I interact with is that what you see is what you get. I just try and be myself at every meeting. I try and bring a little bit of a sense of humor. I just try and show up 100% and do the best that I can. What makes uh, Kate, I think, an outstanding member of the business community is first and foremost her sense of humor. She uh, takes her work seriously. She's been successful in leading her own business. She's been successful in chairing the board and being involved in a, in a host of uh, other ways. But she's got a great sense of humor uh, and uh, brings fun to the work with a seriousness uh, of purpose. What I really like about her being the leader of this Chamber of Commerce, being also the entire business community of Worcester, is that not only she is a business owner, but she has the willingness to help the community. And that combination makes one a great leader. Women often get asked about work-life balance and how we do it, how do we balance family, home life with our professional careers. When we go to women's conferences, it's usually a topic there or a workshop there, but you know what? Men don't get asked that question. So how do we do it? How do women do it? How do men do it? We just do it. Everyone has different circumstances. Everyone has different lives, and you just do it. Kate, there's something I've always wanted to tell you. You are my disco queen. Congratulations, Kate. I hope you're having a blast today. This is a fun day for all of us, and I wish you the best. Kate, congratulations on the Outstanding Women in Business Award. It's well-deserved. Uh, I know you're probably humbled uh, at this and laughing, but uh, a lot of us are really proud of you and honored to work with you every day. For her sense of humor and endless efforts to increase opportunities for all women in the community, please help me congratulate Kate Sherry. I am wicked funny. I don't know what I can say about that. <laughs> I'm also emotional too. If I knew I was crying at the other people's videos, I knew I was going to cry on mine too. But um, a couple things that was not my phone ringing. Um, it was Jennifer's phone. It was Paul. It was Paul Belcito calling you. I, I don't know. Um, Sandra, you said you were going to set the bar low. Thanks a lot. I'm supposed to be the funny one. Um, and. When I heard about the interpretive dance, too, my brother knows that that's my dream, is to dance up on stage. But my husband and I have taken lessons at Fred Astaire, so, honey, you want to come up and dance a little bit? No? Okay. Maybe later. <laughs> um, thank you to Peter Stanton um, for everything that he does for the Worcester Business Journal, the whole staff there. Peter's one of the most... <laughs> He's really the one of the most professional and respectful men that I have ever met. We almost lost you here today, so but be good. good. Uh, no, I am honored and humbled to uh, get this award and to be up here with these other five uh, amazing women. Um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the incredible support, though, that I've gotten over the years. Um, my amazing staff, 
my family, my husband and my kids who never ever see me. I don't ever cook anymore. Um, <laughs> my parents, my father, Jack Sherry, who was my first boss, taught me everything I know. I knew I was going to get choked up. Like the, My staff always says, don't you cry, Kate, but I can't help it. <laughs> um, my mother, Marilyn Sherry, who has also given me a ton of business advice over the years, sometimes unsolicited, but always appreciated and, and uh, always spot on. So thank you for that. Um, my amazing team of employees who help me every single day. And uh, Worcester is really filled with amazing women leaders. I mean, just look around this room. Two mailmen, Kate McAvoy, Christina Andrioli, Sherry Pitcher, Jill DeGillis, Roberta Bryan, Beth Lanius, Karen Polito, Chris Crassidy, Kim Salmon. I mean, I could go on and on and on. I just, I, I love all of you. Um, I depend on you. I need you every day in my life. And also the amazing professional men who I've met in my career. Tim Murray, who um, totally took a chance on me in the board chair when he asked me to be chair of the board of directors for the chamber, I, we were on a conference call and I got off, hung up and I called Sue Mailman right away. I'm like, I'm not board material. She had a very colorful response for me. <laughs> she said, yes, you are. <laughs> so um, it's been great. Uh, Craig Blaze, Mike Angelini, Andy Sherry, my brother, Joe Bartulis, Chris Crowley, Satra, my friend Satra, Ed Augustus, Joe Petty. And again, I could go on and on and on. Um, I feel very valued and respected by these men. So as women working together, it's really our duty and our obligation to support each other and lift each other up. We're all in this together. And it's my turn to reach my hand back to the next outstanding women in line. Um, we did, we wore shirts at the Women's Worcester Conference, uh, Leadership Conference, and said, you can sit with us. And it's kind of a spin-off on the, the mean girl saying, you can't sit with us. So we all wore, wore those shirts. So to all my rock star friends, you can sit with me anytime. What a great group. You know, it says here, you know, final closing remarks. My only cl closing remark is, wow, how about, how, about, how about this group? Let's give another, another ovation. So, whoa, whoa, yep, there we go, standing O. <laughs> so, so here's what's up. I'm going to read for about one more minute. I've got a couple more things to cover. We're going to do the drawing, and all of you ha have tickets. Hopefully have them out on the table. And then we're going to have a quick shot of the winners right in front here. And we want all the alumni in the audience to come up on the stage. And Ron's going to go up there and shoot from above alumni in this year's winners. So that's the next three things. All be done in about three minutes. So here we go. Thank you again to our keynotes, Victoria, Chris, and Takia. Fabulous job. How about that for <laughs> our presenting sponsors, again, for their support, Fallon Health and Nichols College, our supporting sponsors, Marsh McLennan Agency, Southbridge Credit Union, the Guru Tax and Financial Services, and the Women's Initiative of the United Way of Central Mass, and special thanks to our event partners, Elevation Exhibits, InThink Agency, who worked to produce these great videos, um, Pepper's Artful Events, a fabulous food, Revelation Productions, our AV saviors, and, uh, and uh, Ron Boulay Photography, the great Ron Boulay. Thank you, Ron, and our hosts, uh, the facility here, the, the team at Tuckerman Hall, which is a great spot.